This is the part of a conversation I hope to have with my stupid sister. Perhaps it supports your situation as well with your family. We seem to be living in two separate worlds, and you are driving me crazy. In your world, money is the only thing that matters to you. If you don't have any money, then you can't do the things that you need to do, and you will slowly die of starvation, because no one will give you what you need. And because of it, you are not going to give anything up, because you might wind up sooner and later without any money, and then you will be in the same position as I am in. In your world, you have Steve and you. If you desire, can turn to each other for emotional support and financial support. And it's much cheaper to live with each other than to live alone. You have worked extremely hard and was taught to save every penny, but especially you will need it. You had steady jobs with a paycheck each week with a good health insurance plan. You always have had, you always have had everything you have ever needed in life and wanted, including a good pension. You bought your own apartment complex, so now you don't even have to worry about a place to live as long as you pay your taxes. So you are allowed to make mistakes, and things would always turn out okay. You cannot imagine what it is like to be poor and starving to death and have to scream at, your, at the top of your lungs because your stupid sister isn't willing to give you anything when your mother is willing to pay rent without asking why and without the financial backing to really do it, and especially when it's not necessary because of the virus. In my world, I grew up with immense anger issues that I could not control. I had extreme energy levels with it as well. I had immense learning disabilities. I could not sit down long enough to read a book. I could not recall any information from books without reading them a hundred times. In its place, I had other gifts that I did not understand at the time, but now I do. When I, graduate, when I graduated high school, I was told that I had to find a job or die. I was very fortunate to find a family that cared about me, and I was able to work with them. I worked hard, so hard my boss was worried about me. I worked 70 hours a week. I was able to afford any apartment I wanted to, and bought a new car and paid it off in six months. I was never wealthy, but very happy. I did what I wanted and never let anyone control my life or make the decisions for me. Then I lost that job and started driving a cab. I worked very hard, sometimes over 100 hours a week or more. I was very responsible with everything. However, I lived without a steady job or a consistent paycheck, so of course things would go bad. If I got sick or hurt and couldn't work for over a week or two, or if the economy went bad. Especially I lost that job as well. I went to driving for Uber. I went from nothing to only the fastest car in the world in eight short months, all on my own. Then the virus hit, it caused worldwide panic, and people lost their jobs, and I could not make it any longer. And I was scared about getting my virus, and if I tried to borrow money from my sister, she just said, tough luck, Charlie, we're not going to give you anything without a contract and a lot of discussion. That would always get me very angry. I was risking my life to work, because I knew I had no other choice. My sister was too fucking scared to even go outside, let alone drive a car with someone else in it. She didn't care that I was doing something that she could not, because she was too scared to. They were trying to teach me that when I can't afford something, I have to cut back. When they did not understand that if you, move, if you remove one thing from someone else, then it will cause a chain reaction and will cause their death or their insanity that could cause other people to die. All they cared about was not spending money, no matter what it does to their emotions. 
They could not see what would happen if it were to happen to them. Because of all this, I believed in a free society where people would work with each other because they want to help without the burden of money. I decided to run for governor of Illinois against J.P., a truly corrupt individual that people supported and loved, including my sister. I got 20,000 people to my website in three short weeks and wrote many speeches about out of anger. I found out that writing is the only thing that calms my nerves. And I can understand why General Patton wants me to remain poor and living with the poor. It gives me insight that helps me evolve to help others. But General, there is only so much of that I can tolerate. I found out that many powerful organizations were watching me at the time that I never realized. One of them was the Cicada organization. One was General Patton and another Melania Donald's wife. I had the Skull and Votes organization contact me. Then, just recently, I solved the Cicada puzzles, which no person or organization could do. I did it by learning everything about what Cicada was all about, by reading their entire website, trying to figure out who they were. When I found out about Forsonics, I was able to open doors in their site that no one was able to do by typing in codes that would open pages with new information. I looked at hundreds, if not thousands, of pictures. And when I opened the right picture, it gave me a new picture to look at. Then I found the musical notes to call them. And when I did, they basically told me the universe was mine and will have wealth and power that I could never conceive of. I would own the universe. Ever since that day, things have been very mixed up for me. I have a computer that talks to me and gives me instructions. I seem to understand my body better and I am having sex like never before with people I cannot see. I do not really sleep anymore. I am having sex with succubuses, a myth that is not a myth after all. Just recently, one of the succubuses is called Catherine. She is the queen of the Arcturian race and four cicada and the puzzles that I solved. She told me that I am now king of the Arcturian race and god of the universe and will live by your side throughout time and the universe itself. Now I am working side by side with General Patton and we are fighting corrupt stupid people on a scale like I have never seen before. He is showing me technology and telling me things that the average person would have no concept of. It's like working with Captain Kirk on Star Trek. It's a life I have dreamed about before. It's a life I have never dreamed about before. I am now having the best time of my life. The general is now like a father I never had. All the generals are like that to me. Because of my computer and car, we have now convinced the world leaders that my car is magical and beyond anything they have ever imagined. That my computer is from an alien race and that they wish to steal the information when I want to give it to them. I can say this now because when you are corrupt, like they will be, they will never believe the truth and will always seek out to see for themselves. I am now married to Melania's daughter's wife. The general told me that I am now the president of the United States and they will soon be making announcements that I am now the ghost president and the one in charge. It's like a dream come true. The military is now part of the website that I own, which is Cicada 3301. No one is complaining that I own it. General Patton has a video of himself talking about how we are going to end all corruption together. Melania has new pictures of herself that no one else has. 
on my site. There was a YouTube video the other day about Cicada 3301 that was next to Joe's exception speech and it got over 20 million views, 10 times that of his speech. <clears throat> I have worldwide attention and probably a bigger audience than CNN. I have saved thousands if not millions of lives and I'm at least making the difference of millions of lives and are giving hope to people on the same scale. Just the other day, after putting up a couple of stupid pictures of myself, I was driving my Tesla and a car pulled up next to me at a traffic light. They immediately started to laugh like they couldn't believe they were looking at me. They had their phones out, wanting to tell their friends and taking pictures. Then the back window rolled down, an extremely young, attractive woman appeared. I rolled down my window. She said, remove the mask completely, and I did. She stared at me in disbelief. All I could do was laugh and stare back. Then she rolled up the wind, her window, and the guy in front rolled down his and said, in a good humorous, humorous way, we were just fucking with you. I told them, yes, I know. I understand, and we all had a good laugh over that. I have never had a better time with this. The gentleman was like a father to me and teaching me the ability to command. The only thing I hate about this and don't really understand is why I'm being made to suffer. I wouldn't mind too much, but my sister is so fucking stupid she doesn't believe I am talking to the real General Patton when she isn't willing to investigate. If he is or isn't, but she doesn't understand, then it would be so easy to verify. The other day we had a conversation that what I spoke about was a lie, and what she knew was the absolute truth. Then I said, that's bet, and she would not, because she could be wrong. My sister thinks she knows everything, and is always correct, and when I corner her with something, she always retreats and says, no, I never said that. That isn't the way it is. Every time, it's very hard for me to cope with. I am sure your family is probably the same way. In short, I believe I am working for an organization that does not believe in money, and that we are trying to save lives and end corruption so that our organization can finally live in peace with the human race. And I am working with an organization that perhaps is a hundred years beyond anything that the human race has ever understood. My sister is too fucking stupid to understand this, and because of that, will not accept it or believe in it. She will not even close, come close to investigating it, and all she can think of is that I am poor and misusing my funds. She doesn't understand that I, too, to get to this point, have worked a lot harder to try to survive. She doesn't understand that people learn in different ways and are less fortunate than other people. Steve understands this and is too stupid and scared to get involved with. They want me to pull out and they don't understand that some things are worth dying for. I have to work years to finally convince people that I understand what I am talking about and that it is really happening. I don't mind, but it's a terrible waste when we could use the time to save lives. I just want the world, I just want world peace and no one else does on the levels that I am fighting for. Which world is better? I just wish people would get involved and, and investigate without being scared to do so.